<laughs> right, so we are here at the Women's Radio Station with mm -hmm. Anne-Marie Lewis-Thomas, mm -hmm. who is the principal of the Musical Theatre Academy. Mm -hmm. She is an MD, an advocate for mental health. She's just a wonderful woman, and I'm so happy that you have agreed to come and talk to us. Thank you for inviting me. You're very welcome. And action! <laughs> And so just to start off, I'm going to ask you a lot of random questions, but the first one is, if you were a song, what song would you be? If I were a song. <laughs> what? Yeah, well, the song that comes to my, to my head instantly is If I Sing, which is from Closer Than Ever. Okay. But, um, but probably... I don't think I can even explain why, but I, 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 no, not because it's a secret, but I don't know. Yeah. That's the song that comes to my head. But it's all about um, if, if I Sing, which is because of uh, somebody that, that learns to play the, the piano uh, through their father, mm. which I guess is what I did. I had a piano in my house with my father. Yeah. Uh, but my students like this because there's a funny story attached to it because <laughs> I heard that song and I thought it was really touching and very moving because. I, I clearly had a piano in my home because my father plays the piano. Uh, not not brilliantly, but he, that's why I've got a piano in my home. And I, it, uh, there was no sheet music, or oh, I didn't have the sheet music uh, when I first heard it. So I stayed up all night to learn how to play it by ear. Aww. But no, it gets worse. And then I recorded tracks to it. I, returned, <laughs> I recorded a backing track to it. Uh, I transposed it into a key that I could sing it in. And it was years and years ago, so it was back in the days so when it was tape. Yeah. So I recorded tapes. So then to do back and tracks and tapes, you had to sort of bounce it back and forth. Mm -hmm. So this was like a years and years ago. So it took forever to do. I sent the tape to my dad to, for him to hear it, thinking that would be the most beautiful gift I could give him. And my dad, who's <laughs> very Welsh and very, um, he's not an emotional man. That's all he could say was. So he thought he was very nice. But the second verse is something about, and now he's old and his hands grow, and then he can't play anymore. And that's all he was really nice, but he said, yeah, I can play. <laughs> and that was it. And, and so I, I thought he was, was going to break down. I thought I was going to break him down. Oh, my God. And Lord. he just went, I, I, I still play. <laughs> so he and got that's attached a, to that little... Yeah, and that sums up um, a Welsh bloke, really. That's it. So I want to say if I think, but I don't know this thing on that song, but I think that's just a song that I think is just very funny and um, I connect to. Yeah. So yeah. that is a great. It's a great one because it has a story attached. to It, it has a so. good story attached. There we go. And, um, that's a good start. Thank yeah. you very much. And it ages me. It ages me well in the in the era of tapes. True. True. Um, I remember I spent hours um, making my own mixtapes back home. Yeah, I would just I would just sit in front of a of a stereo yeah. listening to the radio and every time a song I would love come on I would just press record. Exactly. So I always had like those little three seconds of the beginning missing. But happy days, yeah. isn't it? That's what we used to do. <laughs> Tapes. Yeah, exactly. It was so good. Yeah. If I think of a better song, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in with a better song. Oh no, the random. Sorry. sorry. Ah, yeah. okay. I will. I'll just good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> First of all, tell me what's your secret. My secret. Yeah. My secret to what? To whatever you want to tell me. I don't. I don't think I've got, I haven't got a secret. I just kind of bumble along. That, that's it. That is my secret. I have no secret. I have no great, great design. I've got no big dream to do anything. I literally just bumble along and then just kind of stumble upon things as I do. As I do. So I just always wanted to do music. Mm -hmm. um, that I guess that's my secret. I just wanted to work with music and. Um, I guess if I had a secret, it was that somebody, somebody once said to me, you can do whatever you want to do. And that somebody was my mum, so uh, that she, I was brought up in a house, so my dad, as we already discussed, is quite dogmatic and says, you can't do anything that you want to do, you just kind of, you should get a proper job. Whereas my mum was just said, yeah, you can, you can do whatever you want to do. So I discovered, you know, I went to college thinking I had to be a teacher because that's what mm -hmm. I was brought up in that sort of household, uh, where if you went to college, where, what household were you didn't go to college actually if you were to go to college you just you had to get a, teacher. a proper job yeah um and then when i went to college i discovered that there was this lifestyle you could have where you didn't have to be a teacher which the irony hasn't escaped me that you literally spend some years then have the college but um so i discovered that you could do loads of things with music like you could work in theater i didn't even know that was a thing 
But you um, you had your BA in performing arts. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't even train in music. I trained in, in music and dance. We didn't do much, that much dance because we were musicians. I, I studied predominantly as a musician. Okay. But dance and acting. So I did all three. Um, but I discovered that you could work in theatre. I didn't even know that was a thing. So, so what if you didn't have that dream to become an actress or anything like that? What drove you to the musical and acting? Because I discovered there's this world, so I moved to London and discovered that you could work in theatre. Okay. So that seemed like a, like, like a, an amazing thing you could do. Because I, I, I didn't really know you could make a living. I thought you could do it as a hobby. Okay. So I thought you could do like am, am drama stuff. But then I discovered people were doing it for a living. So, you know, I went home and, and told my parents this discovery. My dad wouldn't be so stupid. Get a job. <laughs> and my mum just went, well, do it then. Give it a go. And, the, and there weren't, there were no, well, a couple of female MDs, but nobody yeah. was doing it. Yeah. Uh, so I just thought, well, I'll give that a go. And I went through a little while of thinking I maybe would become a performer. And then I was just awful. I was just terrible because I kept telling people they should maybe do it this way. This was a better way of doing it. Yeah. And, a, and a, a tutor sat me down and went, you can't do that. You, you kind of... You might have to become this person or this person. You, you can't do both because oh. you're a really annoying performer. <laughs> so, and so I, I sort of made my decision really quite quickly, uh, and then I just kind of bumbled along. Sort of. So everything that happened since then was kind of almost chance, or did you? Yeah, I, I think it is. Well, chance and just sort of um, dogmatic belief. I think that you just, if you want to do it. And I don't you've got nothing to lose, have you? I think when you're young, you've got nothing to lose. Yeah. Like, why, why not give it a go? And you've got one life. Exactly. And I really believe that. You've got one life, why not give it a go? And when you're skint, you're skint. So just stay skint. Yeah. And be happy. And I think, I think it's very difficult when you're young, because you see your friends beginning to get careers and, I don't know, buying cars. And you can't even buy a tube ticket, and <laughs> and that's really hard. And you see your friend going out for a drink, and you can't. I don't know, you just can't. Yeah. And that's really hard. And I think you go through a time when you have a bit of a wobble, and you don't know what you're doing. But I think you just kind of think, well, what else can you do? And the, the joy that your work brings you kind of just about keeps you going on. I think yeah. you've got good friends around you as well. They they can kind of keep you going. So I think it's the joy of the job. Can, yeah. can keep you going so and, and then your jobs just kind of get bigger and then somebody pays you and that becomes really exciting <laughs> or you find a way to earn money doing it so you know we all have a crap job and I discovered that I could get paid teaching so that was exciting so you kind of stay within the medium and um, I was very lucky to get a crap job teaching in a drama college so I could teach people that kind of still wanted to do it so that was mm -hmm. exciting yeah. Uh, I probably shouldn't have talked so young. I think that was a bad move by them, not by me. But but it turned out to work out all right. Yeah. Um, I don't think it did anybody any harm. But it. So you, you just kind of bumble along, and then I discovered I quite enjoyed teaching. So then I ended up having a nice crap job, and I <laughs> like my proper job. <laughs> so this is what I mean. So I, my secret is I just bumble along. along. Yeah. And then opportunities come your way, and because you've got no responsibility, yeah, you could just take an opportunity. Yeah. And I think that's 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 the secret of just bumbling along, <laughs> bumbling yeah. along. Yeah, and then it. nice opportunities come up, and you start to take those, and you perfect your craft. And, yeah, and then you discover you can do other things. So I started off as an MD and arranging. And I discovered I was arranging rather a lot, which might have meant I might have been composing yeah. a bit more. So you started composing. And then yeah, well I thought I was composing. I composed when I was very young, and I composed when I was. A teenager and the songs got performed when I was a teenager. I sort of forgot I was a composer for a while, and then I kept writing things for people until somebody went, "You are a composer." And it took me a long time to say that. It took me, a, it took me I think, it took me, I was in my thirties until I eventually went, "I am a composer." Do you think it's because it was still engraved in you that you hadn't majored in it, and so maybe you weren't good enough to do it? Well, no, I just thought it was crap. So it, it sort of takes. I think it takes a lot of guts to say that you're doing something. Yeah. So I don't mind doing it. So I would do it. So I'd be writing songs for people left, right, and centre. Yeah. But I wouldn't say I am a composer. You know, I wouldn't put that on my CV, or I wouldn't, I wouldn't put that on my passport. You wouldn't introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Anne Marie. Yeah. I'm a composer. So I'd happily say I'm a musician every time. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't then classify what I was doing within that. So I think that took me a long time to say 
I am a composer. And then I started to write lyrics, and that took me a long time, so I, I would do that. Yeah. So, so I now sort of, with pride, give my title. But yeah, I've got this ridiculous sort of bio, but I sort of go, I am a musical director, I am an arranger, I am a composer, I'm a lyricist. <laughs> and people will cut it down. No, no, no. no. I've actually, I have to be on the first. Yeah, and it's like, well, I, I've actually earned the right to say all those things yeah. now, and my CV supports that I can do those things. So, actually, it's taken a lot of courage to, to, to give myself all those titles. Mm. So I will say it. Yeah. And even though I've got a slash this and a slash that, and a slash and it looks whatever. ridiculous, and I've got so many names, it's silly. Um, but I, I've earned that yeah. point. So, um, Do you yeah. think that, for instance, your students, is it going to take a long time for them to have that sort of confidence? Or do you try to, from the 18s, 19s, 20s that they are, tell them you are an actor and you have to earn that and whatever you do if you compose you're also a composer and do you do you try to teach them or do you want them to learn until you like you 30s that you have that well i hope i really hope that we instill that confidence in them because no i, I did a bizarre course where on day one they say to you right well we're not training you to be teachers and we're not training you to be performers and that, that's an odd place to sit when you're 18. So, and if you ask anybody on, did a, we were called backers when we trained, uh, behave before and arts. And if you ask any backers, we're all kind of sat there going, oh, okay, that's, that's <laughs> not really sure what we're going to do for three years then, but that's great. Yeah. So, we were kind of taught that we weren't being taught to do anything. Oh. And then we kind of discovered where we were. It was all about finding yourself and finding your art. And so, we were told that we weren't being trained to do those things whereas our lot are trained to be actors so that is their identity as well as finding themselves so i hope they leave college knowing that they're actors with a real sense of yeah. who they are in, in the industry but well with a real sense of who they are and then with a sense of who they are in the industry i think both are true good that brings me to that was a really good segue thank you very much Hi.